mean, in her first few months with me, she was terrorized by any new people that came into our house. She was blindly panicked and she would run away as far and as fast as she could, usually with instant shooting diarrhea as she ran. Of course, this was in the house. And being about a 16-week-old puppy who had never been out of her kennel, well, I guess that wasn't the best idea I ever had, right? But, you know, it was meant to be. And sometimes logical decisions just don't cut it, right? Hi, I'm Kathy Kowalik, and I believe that our dogs connect us to the heart and soul of what really matters in life. So hang out, and we'll take a deep dive into the human-dog connection and explore strategies that will inspire you to create legendary, enlightened partnership with your dog. This is the Enlightened by Dogs podcast. Well, hello, Kathy Kowalik here, your host of Enlightened by Dogs. The lessons that I have learned from the dogs that I've shared my life with and who have influenced me personally and my body of work and uh, led me to sharing these important lessons with you. And today I'm going to talk to you about Haley. So we're we're in the way back machine here. So we're going back to gosh, the early 1990s. So Haley, she was a beautiful sable sheltie, absolutely gorgeous. And I vividly remember the day that I first met her. I was at the Quarter Horse Congress, a big giant horse show in Ohio with some friends. And a woman there had an X pen full of fluffy bundles of Shelty Love. And there was a large female that caught my attention right away as she stood on the backs of the other puppies to get to me first when I leaned in to say hi. And I thought, oh, well, she she could be a good fit for my male cattle dog, Blue. So I thought, I am going to go ahead and take her home. And so Blue and Haley got along great. And Haley absolutely became my best friend and I became her student. She was as smart as can be and learned everything I taught her in blazing fast time. Me? Well, I'm sure in her opinion, I was not such a fast learner. Our biggest challenge was Haley's shyness with strangers. She never met a person who deserved her trust right off, and only a handful of people earned the privilege of being in her princess inner circle of friends. I mean, in her first few months with me, she was terrorized by any new people that came into our house. She was blindly panicked and she would run away as far and as fast as she could, usually with instant shooting diarrhea as she ran. Of course, this was in the house. And being about a 16-week-old puppy who had never been out of her kennel, well, I guess that wasn't the best idea I ever had, right? But, you know, it was meant to be. And sometimes logical decisions just don't cut it, right? And so... Off to puppy class we went. She was the star student. And we went on to beginner obedience class. And again, she was the star, winning first place in the little class fun match that we had on graduation night. The stand for exam was a problem, but she trusted me enough to hold her position. And since I could stay really close to her at that baby level, right? And so now you're probably thinking, okay, so what's the problem? <laughs> what's, <laughs> what's going on? So we were so close. We were such a good team. And, and I can't even imagine that we would develop problems, including her running away from me when I called her. But that's exactly what happened. And as I discovered, we had a small issue of trust. 
in specific circumstances. I mean, I was only trying to do my job of keeping her safe and to properly socialize her. And of course, to continue on what I imagined to be a brilliant run in dog obedience trials, my newfound fun hobby to do with my dog. And so this would be my first try at a dog sport after many years of training and showing horses. So I was an eager learner. And of course, knowing me, I jumped right in with both feet. And so it started with me working at Haley, getting comfortable with being close to strangers. I used lots of treats, praise, sweet talking and kind leadership. It's hard to believe now when I look back, but the technique that I used was unheard of at the time. It was all about strict obedience back then. I was advised to put her on a leash, correct her when she did not do as I told her, as in stand there and let strangers touch you, right? And then give her a good girl and a cookie when she did, that I should make her accept people and force her to accept being patted because she was told to. Wow, right? Well, okay, so that wasn't me. It wasn't then and it's certainly not now. So my love and kind respect for animals, you know, using that along with like plain common sense, we kind of blazed our own trail. We made our own way through this. And as I worked on helping Haley to become comfortable with people, I would call her encouragingly toward me in order to get her closer to the people that were standing near me. Now, the method that I used allowed her to choose to move in or not. And when she did, she was rewarded and praised. Now, the one problem with this method was that I called her to move toward me instead of simply allowing her to move in at her own discretion. Yeah, hmm, like, did that enhance or diminish her trust in me? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. I'm thinking that now myself. And do you think that 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 uh, the method that I was using, do you think that helped or hindered her willingness to always come when I called her? Yeah, not so much. And so as it turns out, I was inadvertently teaching my dog not to come when I called her. I didn't know, right? I mean, crazy when I think about it now. You know, it's all in the details, right? And so this quote unquote issue had no effect on our like OB our formal performance obedience recall but it had a definite effect on our everyday life like the real important part and then there was this horse chasing thing that developed so i mean she's a herding breed dog right and that means she's attracted to moving animals And she had a desire, this is where the herding dog comes in, she had a desire to get them under control. So it's not such a good idea when the animals are big, giant, thousand pound horses, including mares protecting their foals and horses who don't particularly care to be chased by a little barking dog. (laughs) And they know how to use their hooves to express their opinion about the whole thing. And so our fencing at the time kept the horses in just fine. It was regular three board horse fencing, but it did nothing to keep the dogs out. And at about six month old, six months old, Haley decided that rounding up the horses was in her job description. And so as soon as any of the horses started to run, like in the paddocks, she took off like a shot under the fence, into the paddocks or pastures, running, barking. I mean, she was a Sheltie, so of course there was barking Um, and she was having a great time, right? And there I was calling her back, yelling at her in my panic to keep her safe because I could see how the horses were responding, of course, all to no avail. She was busy and there was no way she could listen to me even if she wanted to. 
Besides, what kind of a choice was that really, right? Have fun chasing the horses or stop and go back to a crazy woman who was yelling and acting like a primate on a case of Mountain Dew. Okay, right. No choice at all, right? Again, I was teaching her not to come when I called her every time I yelled out her name in that circumstance. Oh my goodness, what was I thinking? So even though our obedience recall was like kick ass awesome, our obedience training did have an undesired effect on our life. There's this trust thing again. Now, the stand for exam was an important element of getting a CD title. I think it still is. I'm not sure, but that was, was way, you know, like a long time ago. Now, think about it. That's hard for a dog that doesn't particularly like strangers getting that close, much less touching her. And at one point in our, on our journey, we had a major setback. I mean, I had worked so carefully to build up her trust in me so that she could, we could tap into our trust and she could use that trust as her courage to stand strong while allowing a stranger to touch her. And I remember this one particular day so clearly. The obedient instructor said it was time to teach her not to lean away or take one little teeny baby step back from his approach on the touching part of the stand for exam. So he said I should support her under her flank and hold her steady, which would discourage her from leaning away from him as he approached. Now, she had been standing in place with no problem, but she was leaning back. Even if her, her little feet didn't move, she was like shrinking back, like away from the touch while holding her feet in place. So apparently that was not acceptable. It was not up to the highest standards that she was capable of, apparently. So I held her in place. I, I took a second leash and I wrapped, wrapped it around her flank while he approached. And when she leaned away, as she always did, she just like leaned into the leash, right? And, and like I wasn't doing anything other than like just holding her steady. But when she felt that leash around her flank that was never there before, um, she panicked. And for the first time ever in that circumstance, she felt trapped and she instantly tried to flee, bucking and twisting against the pressure that she felt in the front and in the back now. I mean, it was only for like two seconds, but the expression on her face is one that I remember clearly to this day, like, what is that, 30 plus years later? I, it was a long time ago. So, oh my gosh. I mean, I had resisted all of the other advice that was thrown at me up to that point, right? I mean, I was blazing my own trail and doing it my own way. I mean, and I just beat myself up over this. You know, my thoughts were spiraling. Why didn't I foresee how she would react to this? Why did I decide to do this? I asked myself over and over and over. I mean, I think I cried for like two weeks about that decision that I made to take that really bad advice. And mostly I cried for the loss of trust between me and my beautiful, sensitive Haley. Oh, and then I like to say that I pulled my head out of my ass. I wiped the dirt off my face and then I got back to having fun with my dog and our trust came back. We worked it out and we did go on to get our CD, uh, our CD with beautiful high 190 scores high in the 190s, like 198, 197, 199, whatever. And so it was, we, we obviously did really well in spite of having, she did have a small leaning back from the judge during the stand for exam. And you know what? I just accepted that as part of who she was. And in my opinion, who she was, was a very, very brave 
very young dog who was courageous enough to stand there in spite of her discomfort because she wanted to be there with me. You know what? Take the points off. That's what I said. And we were so happy to give up bad points. Uh, give up those points that were taken off for her le- little leaning back. Um, and mostly her feet stayed, but every once in a while, depending on the judge's approach, if it was like abrupt, you know, um, she might like move one foot a tiny bit. And there was another part of the story, like the this, you know, one of the mistakes I made with her, you know, me inadvertently teaching her like to run away when I called her. <laughs> Um, and you know, like there's times when your dogs are happily running around, playing, chasing, wrestling, and, you know, just enjoying life being a dog, but you need them in the house because like you have to go to work or something. And so you stand at the back door and you call them in indicating urgency with your unpleasant tone of voice and your demeanor. And your dogs give you like one quick glance in your direction. And I mean, let's face it, any fun loving puppy just like spins off in the opposite direction, right? (laughs) Well, that's what Haley did in those times. And so thank goodness that Haley and I did have a solid relationship going on for the most part. And she did come to me most of the time because she really wanted to be with me. And it was mostly good for us to be together but there were some times and of course it was always when it was really important and I suppose she was feeling my vibe right but I would catch that brief glance in my direction just before she turned and ran in the other direction to do her own thing, you know, like chase horses, play keep away, run away from people I wanted to meet, you know, stay out longer. You know, that was my girl doing exactly what I taught her to do. (laughs) But eventually everything worked out. At eight or nine years old, Haley was absolutely the official greeter of visitors to our farm. She loved everybody and she eagerly ran up to everyone and, you know, usually like politely, but insistently requested a cookie or some petting, (laughs) like no more running away from strangers. And I could count on Haley to come when I called her, you know, over all the years that we were together, but that was mostly because of this one thing. And that is that I learned not to call her unless I was already sure that she would come. Like no point in creating a sure to fail situation, right? I mean, I learned that setting my dog and myself up for success made life so much easier for everyone. Now, sidebar, this is the concept. This is uh, Haley, I got this from Haley. She, this concept evolved into my famous, infamous, notorious, I don't know, 95% rule that I teach in my programs. And so those of you that are wondering, the 95% rule, this is a gift passed down to you through me right from my beautiful Haley. And it's so very effective. So Haley was my companion for 17 glorious years. I say that she stayed around so long because I was such a tough nut to crack. (laughs) I mean, you know, sometimes it just takes longer for some people to learn, if you know what I'm saying. Of course, deep in my heart, I hope she stayed because she loved her life with me and she was happy. And I know she was. We were happy together. I mean, her last couple of years, she couldn't hear very well, if at all. Her sight became diminished. So I put a bell on her collar so I would know if she was on the move and in which direction so I could keep better track of her um, because she couldn't, you know, see or hear me, if at all. 
And so in those la that those last months, uh, um, I laughed because I spent quite a bit of time, like picture this, like she, there she is moving, moving around. I could hear her little bell and she's looking for me, but she can't tell where I am. And so I would be running after her, my arms outstretched, <laughs> like trying to try to catch up with her because she was going in the wrong direction. Um, thankful, of course, that she was slowing down a little in her old age so that I could actually reach her and guide her to go in the other direction. I mean, it was so funny. You know, I, I would hear her little bell like tink, 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 and I would see her softly trotting the wrong way down the trail on our morning walks because she didn't know where I was going. And there I'd go, arms out, jogging toward her, trying to touch her butt so she would know where I was. I just, uh, I mean, this just brings a chuckle and a, like a tear to my eye when I picture myself doing this several times a day. And, you know, I still miss her so much. She was just a, just a delight, just an absolute delight. And so... I think maybe the moral, there's a couple of morals to the story other than the 95% rule, but I think this one, this is one of the lessons that, that Haley passed down. And that is that we can recover from mistakes, right? We can make mistakes, sometimes really big mistakes with our dogs. You know, we're like, Hey, we don't, you know, when we know better, we do better. Right. But we can recover. And sometimes patience and just allowing time to do its magic is the best tool that we have. And and maybe another one that she that she passed down, like, don't be afraid to stand up for what you believe in. I mean, the journey is where our successes are found found and where our learning takes place. And with a trusting partnership anything is possible. Um, and I, I think maybe a, a bit of an epilogue here that I'll, that I'd like to share with you. And, and that is this, um, speaking of the, the lessons that I learned and how that has carried forward into my life and into my work. And I, and I, and I, you know, hope the same for you, but after Haley and I earned that very special obedience CD, um, we ended our, you know, air coding obedience career. I mean, at the time, there was no help available for someone who refused to use prong collars, ear pinches, and corrections. I mean, the next step required dumbbell work, right? Um, uh, the next step in obedience work. And if you've never seen the old school methods, I don't know, I have no idea if any old school trainers still do this, but back then, um, the way it was done across the board, the way to properly, um, quote, those are air quotes, properly train dumbbell and article work um, involved pinching your dog's ear until they cried out like a little yelp and then shoving the dumbbell into their open mouth and then hold their mouth closed and praise them and repeat and then add the command to the process and there you go. So I, I mean, I certainly hope that folks are not using those type of methods today. I mean, it's, it would be hard to believe if they did. Now, remember that this is way before anyone ever heard of don't shoot the dog and positive training, etc. This is way, way, way before that. And Haley and I, went on to have a fun and successful agility career. We were amongst the first wave of pioneers in the U.S. launching this new dog sport called agility. And it was a blast. I mean, I have uh, I, I still have boxes and boxes of agility ribbons and trophies that are gathering uh, dust in the attic from those fun days with Haley and my border collies, Dallas and Reno, and my agility students. And then the hurting bug hit me hard. And so, you know, bye bye everything else. Now, a few years after that, there was this idea of 
training dogs with something called positive reinforcement that was rumored to be successful, right? And of course, as you can imagine, this definitely resonated with my my compassionate uh, soul connection with animals. And I went on to learn from the sea animal trainer folks who did clicker training and they're like, oh my gosh, so much better. Now, also along the way, I did find a woman who was teaching obedience using positive reinforcement. And I worked with her for a bit as well, just to learn more about the training methods, even though I had definitely lost my tr my taste for doing like formal obedience work. Now, the evolution continued, right? In the years since, um, I have come full circle back to the wisdom of my heart, knowing that obedience, no matter how positively it's trained and reinforced, is not a compassionate way to live with our dogs or anyone for that matter. And we as, you know, loving dog moms and a dog loving community, I mean, we still have lots of growing and learning ahead of us. And, and I have said this for many years now and um and I still will say this that positive reinforcement training isn't an end to the evolution of living with, together harmoniously with dogs it's a beginning and as you know my philosophy is that partnership centered cooperative living with dogs without obedience training um, that's where we're going. And I see that someday as being the norm, the new normal. And I've been on a mission. I am on a mission to make the world a better place for dogs and their humans, especially my, my sisters, like women who know the difference between obedience and cooperation and are eager to live their truth with their dogs by their side because there's something liberating about being on the front line with the wind blowing through your hair, brave and vulnerable and strong and free and leading the way. You know what I mean? So that, those are my, that's my experience with my Haley. I hope that you enjoy this and uh, I'll see you next week with another dog teacher story. And in the meantime, be brilliant. Bye-bye for now. Thanks so much for listening. And hey, if you would like to work with me so that I can help you discover the missing pieces you need so that you and your dog can finally be happy and enjoy life together, then head on over to dancingheartsdogacademy.com and request your invitation to join us in the Brilliant Partners Academy when the doors open for the next enrollment. See you next time. And remember, a brilliant partnership with your dog makes your whole life brilliant.